Now, I'm a control freak, right? So I start looking at all those. Now, that's a big mistake. You shouldn't look at this stuff that's generated. So I think this is, this is proof that the abstractions are incorrect. You shouldn't have to have 47 little files generated by a tool in, under, in order to understand what you're doing. And it went wrong because the Windows programming model was wrong. And in fact, if we could go back to these simple programming models where we can actually understand what's going on, I think we, you know, we've come a long way. So you might actually be able to just make components where we actually bake in absolutely everything and uh, you know, give them sensible semantics. The man who wrote the book, The Humane Interface, he was the guy who designed the Mac interface. And he said in his book, I can't remember his name, he said it was a catastrophic mistake allowing people to rearrange buttons in browsers and, you know, you know open office and you can just, oh, I want the buttons over there instead. Because if they do that and somebody else starts using it, they, you know, the trouble with a GUI or a graphic thing, you can't explain to another human being how to do something. You have to draw a picture. You can't actually explain in text how to do things. So there, you know, I just use Emacs. I'm old, I'm old Mac. It's much easier. You should learn Emacs, make, and bash. That's all you need to know. And then just make sure it runs on every machine on the planet. If you're unfortunate enough to have Windows, oh, sorry, no, no, Windows Bay. <laughs> Nasty about it, but I mean, once you've got Emacs, make, and bash running on it, you're all right. Forget all these goofy things. Right. So you mentioned how programming went wrong. And so for most of us here, we're relatively new to programming, mm. and we're all like, learning different programming languages now. So can you just uh, list a number of uh, mainstream languages we should not be learning? <laughs> <laughs> the ones you should not be learning? Well, Java probably damages you. Well, C++, of course. <laughs> You're not filming this, are you? <laughs> Sorry, Bjarne! I will not publish this part. Cut. I will cut it. <laughs> Java was the first thing we learned here. First language, <laughs> Java. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Java for two terms in our life for only one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, well, that's unfair. <laughs> I mean, like, five days of Erlang and two terms of Java, you'll still be. No, Erlang would be winning hands down when you do that. <laughs> it's an unfair fight. You need six months of Java. Then. <laughs> now, uh, which language shouldn't? Uh, which language shouldn't you learn? That's very difficult. I mean, in a sense, every new language you learn teaches you something. I mean, there is a reason for different programming languages. Each, each I, I think, what you should learn is some notion of which programming language is good for which job. Because I'm, I, you know. TCL is very good for just sort of smashing up interfaces if, if you want one, although it's hardly used today. Uh, I've heard that Java can be used for certain things. <laughs> <laughs> C++ seems to be the, the, you know, if you want to build a game or something, everybody seems to write them in C. C's, C's a very good language, you should learn C. Uh, I think you should say which language should you learn. So you should learn C. <laughs> Um, it depends. I think what's going to happen. I've been arguing this with some. I think this. this I think there's going to be a camel distribution. You know, like a camel's got two bumps, and I think it's going to sort of move in two directions. So I think the one direction is going to move to Haskell, theorem proving, sort of very log DHDL. Uh, if you like, they call those advanced computer science practices. Because you need those techniques to make... If you're going to design a processor, you need theorem provers to prove that parts of it are correct. So it's going to get very high-tech. It's getting that way at the moment. Intel has... I, I heard a talk from a guy from Intel. He said, we have 500 theorem provers. They don't know they're theorem provers. They think they're writing programs, but they're actually writing theorems. They said, put them into a theorem prover. We've got 500 guys proving theorems. And they have to think in a different kind of way. Uh, you look at what the trading houses are doing. You know, the really... I heard the... Uh, oh, it's, the Allen Conference is very good. Um, Dave Thomas, the small talk guy, who uh, said... Oh, 
He said, programs are in columns, hardware's in columns, memory's in columns, so you've got a program in columns, so you program in vector J. <laughs> Yeah? He said, that's where the money is. Yeah. He said, want to earn $100,000 as a month? Learn Vector J and get a PhD in maths. So he described this world where, bolted on to a sort of bunker next to the New York Stock Exchange, were a load of guys who got PhDs in maths with 24 core CPUs and 10 petabytes of RAM with every share transaction ever writing programs in Vector J to make money on the stock exchange. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. What's Vector J? Well, it's like, um, it's a functional variant of APL that runs on parallel vector machines. <laughs> so I think, I think what you're going to get is high-tech programming. And actually, that's what you would probably learn. You know, if you do computer science, you're going to should drift in that way. Okay. Then you're going to get low-tech programming. You don't need high technique stuff to make a PHP web page and use MySQL. This is kiddie stuff, you know, you, do, you go that way. And you get this gap in the middle. I don't see the gap in the middle as good at anything. No. So you might as well either learn PHP and Ruby on Rails or something and you go that way, or you learn very log and you make chips. You know, I don't see there's any... Okay, there's always like C in your right device drivers. So I'd learn C. Um, LLVM assembler. Yeah, for, the, for the low tech part. Yeah, LLVM assembler. Or well, then you learn very low or VHDL. But then you go on hardware courses. You're probably in the wrong department. <laughs> I don't know, do you do VHDL? That's advanced stuff. They're, they're, these, the hardware guys are really great, you know, they say. You know, like, when you realise that, oh, you can have registers with one bit in, and it's actually a wire. <laughs> you know, or three-bit words, okay, you've got them. Or, oh, 17 bits, no problem. <laughs> They're crazy. But it's good fun. So I think you learn C, you learn LLVM assembler, you learn sort of Erlang Haskell, something like that. Probably Python. You don't want to learn too many. Or JavaScript, of course, because that's a sort of lingua franca. That should, that should do. Don't learn Perl. <laughs> that will watch your brain forever. That's what we've heard from several teachers here as well. Yeah, well, transmission line garbage. You know. Any more questions? Yes. Instead of uh, designing a new uh, protocol, what should we do uh, to, to talk between Because you said it would, it, it, there are 4,900 and we added one, one more, <laughs> so but that seems not the way to go. Good question. I, don't, I mean, I don't think there is any... I mean, there's a web service description language and XML and all that stuff, but it is rather top-heavy, so it really does need something inventing there that's better. And there's an awful lot of people trying to... Oh, i tell you what you could use. Um, Thrift or Google protocol buffers, I think. Thrift is... I think it's called Thrift. It's the Facebook protocol. Mm -hmm. there, there, are two, there are two competing mm -hmm. protocol buffers. Uh, one by Google and the other by, Thrift, uh, by Facebook. So check both of those out. Um, and then choose one of them. Uh, I think they're quite good, actually. But, but do that, I and mean, don't, don't make your own ad Oh, there are one or two other ones that are... There is a generic protocol, oh, is it called? I can't remember what it's called, which does authentication, framing, and, and a bit of other stuff. It hasn't caught on, unfortunately. Google protocol buffers. Okay, that's it, you can go. <laughs> <laughs>